What uh, interested me really about India, I was seeing my cousin and my cousin uh, runs a, um, a branch of a very large uh, American in business in, in India in the mobile phone market. And this was a few years ago. I said, what's going on, you know, India, what's happening? And he said, there's something big going on in the mobile phone market. I said, okay, what's going on? Now we'd seen that India had the fastest adoption of mobile phones in history. But he said, there's these guys, Reliance, Geo, that have kind of done something weird, which is they've taken over the market. I'd also noticed the demonetization of India, the start of Adha, um, and uh, the UPI system and India stack. And then when he explained what Reliance were doing, and then I saw what they've done to basically give mobile data to everybody in India. So India now consumes more, more mobile data than anybody else. I realized that all of these trends were about to come together, which is obviously India is a tech center anyway, has a huge amount of you know, highly educated engineers and you know, all sorts of stuff, but you're giving them a platform to develop fintech revolution. Um, because you've networked everybody on mobile phones, then you've created a digital system of money, and then crypto is coming on top. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be enormous, what is happening to India, because it's going to, you know, as we know, India's got a bunch of crumbling infrastructure. It's doing a good job updating it all. We've seen all, almost all the airports are now done. The railroads are getting done, but there's a lot to do. The roads, you know, every time you go to India, there's more and more and more roads being built. But all of that means that the future for India is incredibly bright. And I think it's going to be the powerhouse economy of this decade. Doing this conversation, Bitcoin has reached its all-time high, right? So, so it's like amid this supply chain issues, you know, and these all these inflation fears, right? The crypto wave has continued, right? And now Bitcoin is topping up $65,000 which is recording its all-time high. So what are your thoughts? What is going on is network adoption. So we talked a little bit before about how fast mobile phones and mobile data were adopted in India. Actually, the fastest adoption of any technology in all history was the internet. So back in 2000 and, uh, 1997, the internet had 150 million users and was growing at 63% a year. So now in cryptocurrencies, we have about 150 million users, the same, but it's growing at 113% a year. So this is the double the speed of adoption of any technology in all human history. And this is where India plays a role where, you know, Siddharth, what he's managed to achieve with uh, Wazirex and others is you've seen massive adoption in India. It's now the third largest uh, country for adoption in the world. And we've only just started. Right. And that's maturing, um, as we've discussed, into the institutional space. People have realized that this is a bet on the future. It's not only just the store of value bet, which is what everybody first thought it was, but this broadening idea of, of Ethereum and then cryptocurrencies in general, applications, protocols, NFTs, um, social tokens. I mean, the whole thing is now kind of gathering, snowballing at an accelerating pace. It's a really exciting time. So how do you see the adoption for Bitcoin and Ethereum? I mean, this is 2021 onwards. How do you see that? So I look at the numbers on this. So if we just extrapolate the current rate of growth and assume it slows down. So as, as a cycle gets more mature, you slow down the rate of growth over time. So looking at that, we get to a billion people by 2024 and 4 billion by 2030. In terms of market cap, I think the whole thing goes from $2 trillion where we are today to $200 trillion to be in, in line with global equities or global bonds. So none of us have ever faced an opportunity where an entire asset class goes up 100x in 10 years. But that's what we've got on our hands. So we will see cycles. There will be bear markets. There'll be bull markets. But they'll all be in that nice logarithmic trend of over time, the adoption causing these markets to rise, which is why it's such an amazing opportunity for all of us. But also, what are your thoughts on the very recent ProShares Bitcoin Equity Fund? So how That's do you see right. So look, it's a step towards adoption, which is creating, because Americans in particular, there's a lot of regulation about crypto. Most people are equity investors. That's quite unique to the United States. And so this gives them access without having to learn to set up a wallet or do all the other things that the rest of us have gone through. Um, and that's fine. Um, and it's already seen the largest inflows of any ETF on record in the first day. We know there's a huge demand for this because the investment advisors have not been able to put their clients in products and they've had to find other proxies. The issue is that this is actually a ETF on the Bitcoin futures. 
Now, yeah. Bitcoin futures can trade at a premium or a discount to Bitcoin itself. And we see this with other futures-based ETFs. And that tends to mean that over time they underperform because of the futures curve, the contango that happens. It basically means that the premium ends up costing you money. And you're handing that money to the arbitrages, the traders and the hedge funds, who can buy spot Bitcoin and sell the futures contract and capture the difference because it's, it's very attractive to do. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. So it's kind of suboptimal. It's not really what the space is about. The space is about democratization, giving people the power, but it's a start. We've got to get adoption somewhere. And if we can get regulators to start approving bits and pieces, first was the futures contract, then the ETF on the futures contract, next will be the ETF on spot, then there'll be a new set of regulation about owning cryptocurrencies. It just takes time, but it's a good step. How do you see DeFi being shaping all these gigantic countries, you know, like India? How do you see that? My personal view is India is uniquely set up for this because of the integration of the digital currency system um, that you already have. You don't, I mean, there will be a stable, uh, there, there will be a central bank digital currency for India as well. How that integrates with UPI, no idea. But the point being is Indians are now very used to sending money around on their mobile phone instantaneously and making instantaneous payments. And that UPI system allowed people to build fintech layer on top. In fact, that was a stated ambition of the government. So here you are, this incredible decentralized finance that's going to give access lending and borrowing to hundreds of millions of Indians seamlessly on their mobile phone. That's incredibly powerful. You know, Indians have a propensity to own gold. They always have. It's a historical thing. But the young millennials in India, who are by far the largest population, well, they will see the value in digital money. And if they can get yields on it, they can lend it out, they can stake it. I mean, that's far superior than creating jewelry out of the gold and hoping that maintains its value. So, you know, I, I think India is pretty uniquely set up for this. So moving on to my next question, I think the government's role worldwide are researching for the central bank digital currencies right now. Now, do you think we are headed into the right direction with the central bank digital currencies? Our role is not to just complain about it. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. You know, I interviewed um, um, the chief fintech officer for the Monetary Authority of Singapore on Real Vision last week, Sopnendu, uh, another Indian. Um, and he's like, it's coming and it's happening and we are going to use programmable money. And we think there's a lot of benefits for it. You know, and Singapore is actually talking to India about how to create the system and the transfer payments between the two countries. So it's coming. A lot of people fear it because this is not crypto. This is a fiat currency. Look, governments want their taxation and they need a more effective system of money because most countries don't have a high velocity of money. Things get stuck in the banking system. Um, this is going to solve some of that. And it gives governments the ability to integrate fiscal policy and monetary policy together. So they could give wealthy people a certain tax rate and uh, less wealthy people another, but at source. Or you could do it with stimulus checks or whatever it is, right? It gives you the ability to use behavioral economics in, um, in fiscal and monetary policy and become more defined because central banks just cutting rates or printing money is a very blunt tool. So I, I actually think it's good. Governments obviously will abuse it because that's what governments do. Um, but really what it's doing at a top level, if you stand back and say, what is the macro picture? The macro picture is governments have accepted the blockchain is the future of money and they want their money to run on the same technology for right. the advantage they want from it. And therefore, they're going to integrate with this crypto world because they're all part of the same world, which is the digital value layer for the internet. And as long as they get their fair share of taxes, they're going to be fine with it. Right. And also some countries, India has the issue with <clears throat> a slightly closed capital account. So they don't want everybody to take their money offshore immediately. So this, those are the two issues is some countries have a closed capital account, so they want to restrict some of the flow of capital. Um, and the other one is just make sure they get their tax. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. 
we have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just one dollar. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our insider club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.